πραγματική, πραγματική τέτοια. Ε, το έχει διορθώσει εδώ, είναι Ρέτσα Ιωάννη. Ρέτσα Ιωάννη. Όχι, κάποιο άλλο είχε διορθώσει. Ρέτσα Ιωάννη. Όχι, όχι, είναι και το άλλο. Κάποιο με. Καλά, τώρα να μην. Okay, I share, I share my screen. We start live. We are going live right now. Okay, we just show the sun. The sun needs to go up. So uh, we are live now. Okay. 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 Good morning from uh, Elino Germanici Agogi Observatory. Uh, till we start in uh, 10 minutes, uh, we have a, a live uh, observation of the, of the sun. It seems that uh, we are very lucky to, uh, today as uh, the weather forecast uh, uh, was uh, for cloudy sky, but uh, for the moment we have uh, a great uh, blue, blue sky and a very nice observation of the, of the sun disk. Αγαπητοί φίλοι, αυτό είναι μόνο μία ε, επισήμανση για τους ε, ε, συναδέλφους και τους μαθητές που ε, παρακολουθούν από την Ελλάδα. Η, η εκδήλωση σήμερα θα είναι όλη ε, στα αγγλικά, καθώς ε, ε, περιλαμβάνει και τη συνεργασία με το αστεροσκοπείο του Boyden στην, ε, στην Νότια Αφρική. Και επομένως το πείραμα θα διεξαχθεί ταυτόχρονα από μαθητές στην Ελλάδα και στην Νότια Αφρική. Άρα όλη μας η εκδήλωση σήμερα μεταδίδεται στα αγγλικά. Μανολή, εδώ μοιραζόμαστε κάτι άλλο ή είμαστε και okay. Σε κάποιο σημείο, όλοι θα αφήσουμε τα παιδιά να μιλάμε, θα μοιραστούμε αυτό που λειτουργούσε. 
Ωραία. Ωραία. Και επομένω. Εγώ, 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 εγώ θα κάνω το sharing ε, 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 στα παιδιά, όχι στου νοτιακού μου συνεργού. Ναι, ίσω να, να χρειαστεί να φανούν αυτοί λιγάκι. Ωραία. Άρα θα κάνω εκείνη την ώρα το Dear colleagues, we are uh, starting in uh, two minutes. Kyrie Tsumaki, ξεκινάμε σε δύο λεπτά. Έχουμε πολύ αέρα εδώ. Παρακαλώ. Ακούμε με πολύ τέτοιο, με πολύ βαβούρα από τον αέρα. We will uh, we will start uh, the the event uh, the event now. So uh, I would like to thank uh, our colleagues uh, in uh, uh, South Africa for giving us the opportunity to organize this year the Eratosthenes uh, event. Uh, this is an activity that uh, we are organizing the last uh, 15 uh, 15 years, trying to demonstrate. Uh, this uh, unique uh, experiment, uh, Eratosthenes method to measure the appearance of uh, our planet. Um, the, the whole idea is uh, based on uh, his uh, uh, passion to look uh, and uh, study carefully. He 
his uh, era and uh, at the same time his uh, creative uh, spirit and uh, his passion for the, for the inquiry process. So um, we will have the opportunity to repeat a measurement using two reference uh, points, one in Greece and one in uh, South Africa. I would like to say that we are very happy uh, as uh, against the weather forecast, uh, we have the, the opportunity to have a very a nice uh, image of uh, of the sun uh, right now we have a blue uh, blue sky uh, there is some uh, some wind of course but uh, overall we uh, we we will be really ready to uh, have a great uh, great opportunity to make uh, to make the measurement um, in this uh, in this framework uh, I would like to welcome everyone and, uh, to give the floor to our uh, colleagues uh, in uh, South Africa. Uh, we have worked uh, together the previous days to prepare this event for, uh, for all of you. I would like to thank the whole team in uh, Boyden Observatory and the University of the Free State and uh, I would like to give the floor to Professor Matti Hoffman to welcome the participants. Okay, thank you. Let's just make sure the sound and the video goes through. It appears like that. Uh, you see me all there from Athens? Yes, everything, everything is okay. Okay, excellent. I'm uh, very thankful and proud to, uh, to say a word of welcome and to introduce you to the people here in Bluefontein. Uh, the most important are the learners, I think, from at least 12 different schools. It's a public holiday in South Africa, and they gave up their uh, day of vacation to come and contribute to this uh, wonderful event. They have been arranged by colleagues at uh, the School of Education at the University of the Free State, uh, in the uh, division called Science for the Future. And my colleagues there uh, in the back, Dr. Kovis from Breda, just put up your hand, Kovis. There's Dr. Kovis from Breda, and next to him, Mariette Erwe. Okay, and there we have all the learners. And then a special word of welcome to Mr. James Mashapa. He's Chief Specialist and uh, Learning uh, Area Coordinator for Maths and Science for the senior grades in, uh, in the Free State. He will soon say a few words of inspiration to the, uh, to the learners. And then we have the technical people for the sound and the video. We are grateful for their service to make this event possible. So I will give over to Mr. Mashapa to say uh, a few words of inspiration. Just look in the direction of that. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Um, good morning, uh, fellow learners. It is indeed a great honor for me to be here to I just give you some few words of um, inspiration. You know, um, many, many people, um, and of course, including our parents, you know, I'm talking about the old generation now, they have this phobia for the subject maths, they have this phobia for subject physical sciences. And to us, seeing you here today, it gives us a much more encouragement because we now believe that science and mathematics are basically now in, in our amidst. Many times ago, we heard a number of incidences, incidents where um, our learners were dropping out mathematics in schools. And that did not actually go well with us, especially in the uh, motel district. That is why today um, we have partnered with uh, 
uh, the planetarium so that we can actually facilitate and encourage you to be the most, to have most of you participating in uh, math and science programs. You can be a scientist, there is no doubt about it. And to be a scientist, you don't need miracles. No. This is one of the things that you need experiment. No. This is one of the things that can actually drive you to actually be a good scientist, being able to work uh, with practical um, uh, materials. You know, what I'm currently doing is basically to uh, present experiments also to learners, mostly at disadvantaged schools. You know, the manner in which learners interact with material, it's so good in such a way that sometimes when there is no material, you ask yourself a question, but why are these schools not having uh, materials for practical experiments? So here you have now a bigger opportunity uh, here at the planetarium, even to go out and tell others that I've been to uh, the planetarium and therefore you can go there too because this is where you see uh, things happening live. You know? Time for theories is, is, is diminishing now because previously we used to be told that, you know, if you have this one plus this one, it gives you this one. But now at least we can see with our own eyes that when those things meet, when those things have been combined, then the results will be, will be this one. So I want to thank you very much for giving yourself a time to come here. And I hope that you're going to enjoy this particular experiment very well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. You can continue now there from Athens. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. I, uh, I would like, let's say, to add uh, to what uh, uh, Mr. Masapa just said, that uh, here in our, uh, in our school, in Elino Germanique Agogi, we are trying to uh, introduce our students to the inquiry process. This is, uh, uh, let's say, the most important aspect of our methodology and of our effort uh, during the, the years our students are uh, following the educational program of our, of our school. We are trying to uh, involve them in experiments to connect uh, uh, the theoretical aspects with everyday uh, life and uh, to demonstrate that they have always to try to discover uh, what is really behind uh, the world uh, around us. So uh, we believe that uh, Eratosthenes was the first, uh, among the first uh, people uh, who have demonstrated that by studying the resources, by using his uh, curiosity and making simple uh, measurements, he managed without moving away from Alexandria to estimate to a very high accuracy the circumference of the, of the planet. As, uh, as maybe you know, and I really encourage uh, everyone uh, attending this event to uh, look and uh, uh, follow the um, Carl Sagan's um, Cosmos series where he is discussing the experiment um, you will notice that uh, uh, during this presentation that uh, Eratosthenes was, uh, let's say, named by uh, the others, uh, his colleagues, let's say, of the time, as uh, Beta, meaning that uh, he was always making discoveries uh, second. But uh, in fact, uh, uh, according to the, as we can see really from the history of, uh, of science, he was really uh, a big uh, alpha, we can say, and a alpha capital, uh, because uh, he was uh, managed to, to be a really a, a great example of a, of a polymath, 
he, he was a geographer, he was mathematician, uh, he was uh, really, he was named uh, by um, the people of his time as uh, a, a pedathlon man. Pedathlon is a term that uh, we are using also today for this uh, Olymp Olympic uh, sport, demonstrating that uh, these athletes are experts in uh, many in many fields. So this was the idea of the of the researcher of the time. So today, with this opportunity, we celebrate uh, this event, which uh, for us is. Uh, the major uh, demonstration of the human uh, spirit and uh, discovery. So I will not uh, speak further about the Eratosthenes and the event. This is the job of our, uh, of our students. Uh, we have three students from the first class of Liceum, 15 years old, who are going to present uh, to you, to the audience, the Eratosthenes experiment. Uh, it's uh, Manthos Kupleris, Socrates Balanas, and uh, Ioannis Retsis. So guys, you have the floor to introduce the audience to Eratosthenes experiment. Hello, my name is uh, Manthos Kupleris, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, Eratosthenes experiment. So, um, the, uh, the slides, uh, Mr. Tumax, please. Marthos, I come canonica. Uh, yes, uh, can we see the slides? Can we see the slides? The presentation? Uh, it's the WebEx. Oh, yeah. uh, Eratosthenes uh, was a Greek uh, polymath, a mathematician, geographer, poet, astronomer, and music theorist. He was a man of learning, uh, becoming the chief librarian at the Library of Alexandria. And yes, he lived in 250 BC, so a very long time ago. Uh, this man uh, is um, is uh, today known uh, for uh, for a very great uh, breakthrough, measuring the Earth uh, circumference. He had a very simple and insightful idea uh, that led to this uh, significant uh, discovery. He used only a stick and some elementary Euclidean geometry uh, to uh, find it. So uh, let's find out uh, what he thought. Uh, the sun is at a very large uh, distance. Uh, so the sun rays are coming parallel to the Earth. He read in a papyrus that in the noon of the 21st of June, the sun rays were falling perpendicular to see him, as you can see, uh, a city uh, in the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, because if someone uh, was standing in front of a deep uh, well, he could see the sun directly above him. So no shadow, no shadow was created. He would see the sun directly above him. Um, Yes, uh, he was aware that uh, the Earth is spherical, of course, and understood that at the same time in Alexandria, north of Sin, uh, he could see uh, a, an angle, he could measure an angle theta uh, between uh, the stick and the sun rays, of course. Um, we can find theta by computing uh, the length of the shadow and the length of the stick, of course, and computing the uh, tangent. That's uh, what uh, we are going to do today. Um, uh, this angle is equal to the central angle between Alexander and Sin, because of course, there alternate interior angle due to the parallelity uh, we uh, discussed uh, previously. Uh, therefore, by, calcul uh, by calculating the distance of the two cities, uh, this is essentially 800 kilometers, we know uh, that the angle, uh, we, we measure the angle to be, let's say, 7.2 uh, degrees. So the a fiftieth of uh, the circumference of the Earth is seven uh, uh, point, uh, no, uh, 800 kilometers. Uh, so the whole circumference is 40,000 kilometers, estimately. That's uh, what uh, he thought. 
uh, that's uh, what he did uh, to, uh, to find it. It's a, a very um, uh, simple, uh, but uh, uh, really uh, important uh, uh, discovery, a, a, a major breakthrough uh, with only uh, some uh, elementary tools, a stick and geometry. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, attendance. Now, uh, my schoolmate Socrates is going to uh, talk to you about uh, uh, our experiment and uh, uh, how we uh, worked. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Your presentation was wonderful. And now it is my turn to welcome you all. Uh, my name is Socrates Blanas, and I will explain to you what is this experiment that we are doing and why this experiment could not be carried out between two irrelevant schools, for example, this in London and Rome. Uh, firstly, we are doing this experiment on the spring equinox, uh, which is when day and night are exactly the same. Uh, we are conducting the experiment on this day because the sunbeams also fall vertically at the equator at noon. Uh, today, all the wells that exist there will reflect the sun at that time. Uh, this day leads to the same observations that are the made in scene in June. At the same time in Greece, if you place a stick on the ground, a shadow is formed, which helps us calculate the angle that the sunbeams and the stick make. Uh, this angle is equal to the angle between Athens and the equator, which is really the latitude of Athens. The same procedure will be made in Boyden by our fellow students who will count their own latitude. Uh, last but not least, I would like to mention the connection that our schools share. Uh, this connection is geographical and specifically our schools are located almost in the same meridian. Uh, this means that our experiments will relatively be close in terms of time, something that will not stand in different longitude. Sin and Alexandria shared the same connection, so Eratosthenes could do the same experiment with, without many mistakes. Uh, furthermore, this geographical connection between our schools makes the holding of this experiment possible. Uh, as this way, we can measure the arc in the surface of the Earth in between El Neuermannique, Agoye, and Boyden, and we will correlate with the corresponding central angle by using analogies with which we can calculate the circumference of the Earth. Uh, thank you all for your attendance, and now my friend Ioannis will take my place. Uh, thank you very much, Socrates. Now it is my turn to speak. Uh, so, my name is Ioannis Etsis. I am 15 years old. And now I'm going to talk to you about the differences between the prototype experiment and our one. Then I will try to explain to you the practical part and the setup of the experiment so that you understand what we need and what we should do to carry out the experiment. The experiment of Eratosthenes was carried out in Sin, Egypt, because Sin is situated on the Tropic of Cancer, which is at a latitude of 23 degrees and 22 minutes north which is equal to the inclination of the Earth in relation to the level of its rotation to the Sun. Actually, it is the most northern latitude at which the Sun can reach its zenith, and the sunbeams fall vertically on the Tropic of Cancer at 21 of June. It was that phenomenon that inspired Eratosthenes to do the experiment. In our experiment, we choose the spring equinox because it is the time of the year when the inclination of the axis of the Earth in relation to the level of its rotation around the Sun is such that the sunbeams fall vertically on the equator. Eratos, Eratosthenes, in his experiment, measured an angle from the shadow of the stick that corresponds to the angle between Alexandria and Sydney. We, we measured from the shadow of the stick an angle that corresponds to the central angle between Athens and the equator. We achieve this by changing the date. We also use two schools and add their angular distances. In this way, we hope to achieve even greater accuracy. Uh, here we have a picture of the experiment. We collaborated with our teachers to understand not only the theoretical, but also the practical part of the experiment. Hours were devoted from our weekly program to physics and math lessons so that everyone in the first class of high school could be here and execute the calculation of the experiment. Um, at, the beginning, at the beginning, our teachers explained us the whole experiment in an analytic way and advised us the procedure we had to follow. After consulting it, we went on the practical part. 
the first thing we had to do was to measure the length of the shadow created by the sandwich that fell on the stick. Then we had to proceed by measuring the tangent to the created triangle. Then, after adding our angulates with the angle F that our classmates will find in South Africa, we would divide them by 360 degrees. Finally, we were to multiply the outcome by the distance between our location and Boyden, and thus we would come up with the circumference of the Earth. We will have a worksheet in which we will note the length of the stick, the distance between Athens and Boyden, our longitude and latitude, the time of our local noon, as well as the tangent of the angle that will be formed. Finally, we will need to take five measurements so that we can find the best possible one that corresponds to the minimum shadow at our local noon. We must set the stick vertically and have a guide to check it regularly, a measuring tape to measure the shadow, a friend to help us set it up, as well as a pocket computer so that we can do any mathematical operations that will go. But above all, good mood from all of us. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you uh, very much, uh, guys. Um, let me ask uh, you, would you like to, uh, to add uh, something? Uh, as now we, we will need to, to move to, to South Africa, to the students there to perform the experiment. Any advice, any recommendation from you, from you guys? No? No? Okay. okay. Okay, can you hear me uh, there now? Are they yep, back to us? Very. Okay, what I want to do um, to from our uh, setup here, just share a video while the learners go outside. Uh, the video that I want to share, uh, if the technical people can just help me there in the back uh, so that I can access the share uh, button, I will be there soon. Uh, so the learners will now go and gather around uh, uh, the experimental setup, the measurement setup in the outside, so it will take around five minutes so that we are ready to start taking measurements around um, 18 minutes past 12. Uh, on Friday, we had a trial run. We practiced a bit, always a good idea when you do some things, the next time you do it better. Uh, that's one of the important things in, in life. On Friday, uh, we practiced with a good a group of learners here at the Urania Secondary Girls School. Uh, I will just show you some footage of that. Uh, so we will have uh, uh, the same setup basically, but uh, I've learned a few tricks to, to have a more stable setup to do a more accurate measurement. Um, okay, so I'm going to move to the back while the learners, uh, Mariette, you can go outside and organize them and your assistants. We can see the video uh, now. We can see your screen. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Um, I, 
Excellent. Okay. Uh, here you see the group of grade 12 uh, physical science learners. Uh, I'm there on the right, but that's not important. Here were my four assistants who helped to took measurements and to check uh, the setup. The stick, of course, have to be as vertical as possible with respect to the horizontal field. So you can see I have a level there. Can you see the video? Uh, it, it, it has not uh, started yet. We can see the... the, the okay, you can see the image. Okay, yes. okay, okay. But you can see the image that I'm explaining. Okay, so you can see I have uh, defined the horizontal plane, I have a vertical stick, I use the square to make sure it is perpendicular, and that's what they are doing now outside, you will soon see that. Okay, and let's just see um, how, the, how uh, we proceeded there, and uh, I'm explaining the experiment to them, and, uh, and now I can take you a little bit forward to where I actually started to do some of the measurements. So it's just uh, to explain about them, how we will do the experiment. So I assume you can see the video now. Yes. Manolis, can you see the, okay, excellent. Yes, yes. Okay, I will soon just show you a few uh, short section here. Now uh, that setup have to be rotated due north south so that the shadow of the stick falls on my uh, meter stick. So I have a measuring device there on the horizontal plane, and we have to check uh, the length of the vertical stick, which we decided to be uh, to be as close as possible to one meter. It's a bit tricky to measure the shadow. You will see on the footage soon because it's not as sharp as we would like it to want uh, to, to be. Okay, with a level, we, we checked that that is vertical. The stability of the vertical rock, uh, rot is important and it has to be vertical in all directions. So you have to stabilize it. Okay, and let me just forward to we actually uh, took a measurement. Okay, one can transfer the marks, the end of the shadows, to a piece of white paper to have good contrast. I used a, a paper there just to, to see where exactly where the shadow is. Uh, on the bit of shiny surface. Okay, now I'm going to uh, to stop the video, and for the moment you can maybe uh, transfer to an image on your side uh, while I'm loading my get my cell phone active to give a live feed from uh, the outside. It may take about a minute. Okay. Uh, so what you see here is the measurement uh, that uh, the team from uh, South Africa performed on Friday. A similar measurement was taken also from the team of Elino Germaniki Agogi. Uh, now we are going to prepare for the second for the say, round of, uh, of measurements in which we will try to identify today's process here, the process that we will follow, is the following. We will take a measurement from uh, South Africa, we will take a measurement from Greece, and then we will find the angle uh, in question, and then our students... Okay, I'm ready here to start doing measurements. Yes. Okay. We'll work together to, to find the circumference of the Earth. Please, please continue. It's not our first meeting. We are, we are seeing, we are still seeing the video. Okay. The machine will be that you will climb the key dry, let the scar will be up on fall. And then, if you have a wet paper, what we say, it can't skype there. That we say, it's the donkerste deal. I'm going to do it. Okay, Manolis, can you hear me? 
Yes, so we, we are projecting the, the matrix. We are almost form. ready to do the first measurement. How much time do we have? Uh, yes, it is 12.15. Okay, okay, still four minutes. Three. Okay, we have three minutes before we will do our first measurement. You can see here the shadow is almost on our meter stick. We may have to move it a little bit if it's not but it's slowly moving where we want it. Can you see the image on that side? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, everyone is ready here. Uh, Mariette is the measuring director that coordinates uh, the process. And you can see here the Naval Leap Planetarium, the, the dome. This was an old observatory. And there's the old telescope that was inside that building. I hope you can see the old telescope, a little bit of clouds in the sky. But yes, overhead, yes. it's uncloudy. And we are within a game reserve. Nice. We are located in a game reserve in the middle of the city. And this morning I saw the giraffes walking around. Okay, so let's see how our shadow is making progress. How much time do we have left? Um, There's our timekeeper. One and a half. One and a half minutes before the first measurement. So let me just fine tune here. Okay. Um, okay, can you should be able to see the shadow there? Yes, yes, we are. Okay, we just have to check. Ooh, ooh. See, I when I turned it, okay, I can just adjust a little bit here. Okay, good enough. In the other direction. That's good. Okay. So who's going to take the uh, measurement? Okay, you guys. Uh, it's almost time. There are seconds. Okay. The method that we are going, we're going to do it in two ways. Transfer it to a piece of paper and just make a mark there and, and number it and measure after the time. Okay, you should just be consistent with how you mark it. I can then by going also to measure it directly on the meter stick, which is a bit shiny. Okay, well, yes, on our phones. Okay, 57.7, that is centimeters. So if we work in millimeters, 577. Okay, then we wait one minute and we take a measurement again. So that will be then 1220. For 1219, yes. Okay, did you all get that? 57.7 centimeters for 1219. So it changes very little bit in the minute's time, as you can imagine. And the change is due to the Earth's rotation. So you can it. You can put it in place. Okay, I'm going to mark it. 57.5. 57.5. For 575 millimeters. It's amazing, right? In, in one minute. That shadow shows in five Let's see how they fill in the table here. Okay. Always important in the top to indicate your units. Then you don't have to write it with every number.
en segundos. Remember to be consistent in the way that you interpret the shadow. Okay. Is it against the base there? Yes. Yeah, okay. So your back will be longer than your penis card. Yeah, it's on the begin to draw of course the word. Yeah. 57.4. 57.4. Is that correct? 57.4. Yeah. That is for 1221, eh? That one guy. Ten seconds. Okay. Now, would you need to precisely solve the manner of sailors? What is called the betrif? I need to be longer. Yeah. I know we have to be longer. I can't be longer. I can now begin. Basically, on the course, come and be longer. Okay. Then is the problem. As it be longer, what? Then would you need another kind of meat? Merk. Or for a black merk that you need to do before before the merk work. Oh, that's a good idea. But don't miss kind of something. Oh, my God. Here, up here. Okay. Work net op diezelfde manier as nou. En dan lees jy hem ook op die meterstok. Uh, 57.5. 5.75. Okay, so that's good. Again. Hey guys, come stand a little bit closer. <laughs> you are on TV anyway. Okay, the last measurement is coming up. Fifty-seven point eight. Fifty-seven point eight centimeters or five seven six millimeters. Okay, now it's about uh, making sure you have written all the measurements on your uh, worksheets. And if something looks funny in our measurements, we can go back. Just mark which side is the starting point. <laughs> so that you know from which side to measure if we have to uh, to check a measurement. So you can write zero at the, the place which was against the pole. Okay. Uh, Manolis, I'm going to stop the video link from here, from the outside. We have completed the measurement okay. and uh, we will move back into the planetarium while your true team is getting ready to do your measurements around your local node. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, now uh, we will uh, uh, do the same process uh, with the uh, measurements uh, that will take place in the uh, starting. Uh, Manoli, Manoli, you can start. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. 
Chris, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Taki. Yes, you can hear me. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, good morning to all uh, from the fourth year of uh, the Observatory of the uh, Giovanni Cabo in Marini. My name is Santi Tumakis. I'm a physicist in uh, our high school. And uh, together with my colleague uh, Manuel Sanyotakis, we will uh, present to you uh, all the process and the result of the experiment. Okay, a moment, please. is good. Uh, we have a, a very good uh, shadow, but we have uh, also a strong wind. Uh, Manuel? So, uh, uh, Takis and uh, Manolis are going to uh, uh, announce the measurements because from the place where they are, uh, it's not uh, really easy to, to hear them because uh, there is a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of wind. So, they will uh, announce the measurements also to you. Uh, I would like to uh, ask also the students who are supporting the measurement uh, from uh, from their uh, their they going to share uh, their measurements. Okay. Can you hear me, Paul? Yes. And uh, now, Manoli, we can hear you very well. Okay. Perfect. So we are going to start now. Okay. Uh, the time is uh, half past twelve. So we are going to take a first measurement now. We did we did a test before. Okay. So you, you see here that unfortunately the situation is uh, is this that uh, due to the COVID we cannot have all our students together. So we have our measurement. I guess. 
So the measurement at half past 12 is 79.5 centimeters. Uh, for the students who are participating with us, okay, Ioannis, Mateos, okay, Socrates, uh, are you up there? Yes, yes, hear us. Yes, yes, we can. What is your situation up there? Hey, for me, it has a lot of wind. That it, see, then the, connect, then the connection is really poor. But can you hear me all right? Uh, one moment. Okay, so uh, I'm, going, I'm going to share also our measurement. We are at 79.2. You can see the way you can hear it, actually. Uh, can you hear me? Any of our students want to share? The, the measurement. So let, let's take let's take another one here. Uh, so, okay, so we have found our minimum. It is seventy-eight point nine centimeters. We will take a couple more measurements in order to identify that this is the actual minimum. And then we have our measurement. In the meantime, Marcos, would you like to, to share your screen? Of course. Uh, can you see me and can you hear me good? Yes, we can. Well, uh, I'm going to show you my measurements. Uh, I have uh, the uh, experiment uh, set up, and um, I'm actually going to try to um, take the. It is actually um, perpendicular. Yes, it's good. And now um, I know that the road, the stick, has the uh, a length of forty uh, two centimeters exactly. Uh, so the saddle, can you see me? Uh, the saddle has a length of uh, thirty two uh, centimeters. 32 centimeters. So we can uh, we can uh, make our uh, measurement. Yes, I have my uh, measurements uh, done. Okay, we need to develop the final measurement. How oh, 78.5 centimeters. Okay, something that we might be worth watching here is the angle that the true north makes with our shadow. I don't know if it is possible to show it from this place as we are. Can you, can you see the compass? Is it visible? Yeah. So you, you can actually see the angle between the... Manoli, you need to speak louder. We cannot hear you. Yes, yes. Uh, what what we, we also wanted to show, unfortunately, I don't know if it can be shown very well here, is the angle between the the north, uh, the south north axis, let's say, and our shadow. Okay, I, I will try to bring it the compass, uh, the camera closer to the compass in order to demonstrate that. 
Can you see it? is not only in terms of the tangent of the angle that we measure, but also from the relative orientation of the two hemispheres. So I think that we have our measurement here. Okay, it is 78.5 centimeters, the shadow length, and the length of the pole is one meter. Okay, so I think that it is a good moment to proceed to the next step where uh, the two groups of uh, students will do the analysis. Is that correct? Yes, now it's uh, the time for the, for the students to cooperate uh, based on the measurements to, to perform the calculation. Okay, so can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Manoli. Yes. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so for the groups of students, I think it might be optimal if we could repeat our measurements from both hemispheres in order to proceed to the calculation of the angle between the two locations. So, Mariette, can you hear me? I, I cannot hear you. So I will just proceed to repeat the, the value that we calculated here at EA. The value of the shadow length is equal to 78.5 centimeters, okay? Whereas the angle, the, the, the height, the, the length of our road is equal to one meter. So for our students, it is L, it is H equal to one meter and S equal to 78.5 centimeters. Professor Hoffman? I can I cannot hear you. Uh, we we cannot hear the Bloomfontein uh, team. Can you check your mic, please? Yes, but I, I am not receiving actually. Uh, We cannot, uh, we cannot hear uh, uh, the blue contain transmission for the moment. Did you hear that? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the microphone fell. Can you hear us now? Yes, yes, now we can hear you perfectly. Okay, I give over to Mariette and she will share our measurements and preliminary calculation. Right, normally you do a mic drop at the end, no. Um, so our shortest distance that we got, uh, the learners can just confirm with me, yes, uh, 57,4 centimeters. Our rod was also one meter, so 100 centimeters. And we calculated our angle theta as 29,86 degrees. 
Could you could you repeat, please? Okay, shortest distance shortest distance of the shadow. Yes. Let me just lower this a little bit. <laughs> shortest distance of the shadow is uh, fifty seven comma four centimeters. Okay. And uh, our rod was also 100 centimeters exactly. And the angle that we calculated was 29,86 degrees. 29,86 degrees, right? 29,86 degrees, yes. Okay, very nice. So these numbers, we will also share them now live uh, in the slide. So from our part as well, the uh, shadow length is 78.5 centimeters. The length of the road is 100 centimeters. And we are now waiting to get the, the result. The result is 38.14 degrees. As I said, so 38.14 degrees. 38.14. So I will. Uh, share these results uh, with a slide in order for everyone to be able to see them. Therefore, uh, we have phi equals to 29.86 degrees and theta, as we have uh, set it up, let's say, is 38.14 degrees. Am I correct? That's right. Okay, so this is the value that our students will have to insert in the calculation in order to proceed. So, uh, Manthos, Ioannis, Socrates, are you with us? Yes, yes, we are right here. Okay. So, uh, I think now it's a good moment to start the process of doing the, the calculation uh, with your colleagues. Okay, so has everyone noted the numbers? I have noted the numbers. I've noted the yes. numbers. Very well. So, let us proceed now to the analysis part of our work. The next thing we need to do is to calculate the distance between the two locations. Okay. Can you hear us from Bluefontaine? Mariette, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, very well. So the next step, the next thing we want to do is to calculate the distance between the two locations. Okay. So let's proceed right. together. Let's let's proceed together to do that. I will uh, I will try to utilize in order to support you the interactive map maker of National Geographic. Okay, so let me Thank share you. my screen. And I, I would like the students to help us, uh, guide us throughout the procedure. Okay? So there are many ways with which we can calculate uh, the distance between two points uh, uh, on the map here. We will try to to use this one, the interactive map maker. Okay, so the first thing that uh, we need to do is to find our precise locations. Let's say in the map. Okay. 
Right, so, so we're going to put in the coordinates. Exactly. The, this this map maker, unfortunately, the bad thing that it has is that you cannot just type the coordinates and find the location. So we may need to use more than one ways to do it. So what I'm going to do right now is to give the precise coordinates of my school in Palini. Okay. And uh, I would like our students to help us with uh, with this okay so it is 38 degrees north you see here that as i move my cursor latitude and longitude vary you may say that this is not the most precise way to do uh, the calculation However, it is uh, important that uh, we all understand that there are many ways to do it and that we are trying to do uh, in a way that uh, is uh, didactic, let's say. So it is 38. So we are here, actually. Here. And the longitude in us is 23.8 nine degrees so we are actually here and what we are, we are going to do is we are going to do a market i would i would like to state here that the team of the uh, of south africa have also done a separate calculation so we are going to do this together okay and compare perhaps so now that we have done this we need to proceed to find the coordinates of our colleagues okay so can you share with us Right. So, uh, so yeah, in Bloemfontein, our coordinates are, um, we are, of course, on, on the southern hemisphere, so therefore it's a minus 29 degrees. Okay, so please give me a moment to zoom out. Okay, so you said that the coordinate is, again? Uh, minus, 20, minus 29, so 29 degrees south. Okay, so let me zoom out. We are going to do the analysis. I would like uh, the, the students from both sides, if they have any question, any observation, please don't hesitate to say it. Okay. The learners here in so Bloemfontein. Page number four is the coordinates of of the school there in Greece and the and here in Bloemfontein. So you know what what coordinates we are referring to. Okay, okay, we are in the middle of the city of Bloemfontein. So longitude? Uh, the longitude is um, uh, 26 degrees, 26.2. Okay, so I'm going to move. 26.2, yeah, okay, I, I think I'm closer. Okay, I will try to zoom in a bit. Yeah. Um, you, you can clearly see the city of Bluefontein there in the bottom left of the screen. We are yes. in the middle. No, now you are a bit off. Uh, if, if you go to the left again, we are in the middle of Bloemfontein. There it is, that city in the free state. Okay, so uh, share with me again your... Uh, so you <laughs> said 29? Okay. To 29 and then the longitude is 26.2 uh, there's a city called Bloemfontein there you are right in the middle of the city here we are okay so right now what you can see is that we have the two markers so what I'm going to do is draw a line between the two points okay we need to be a bit precise here okay and the first part of the line will be in this moment this point and the second part will be at the other marker can I, can everyone hear me yes we can hear you okay. so we need to move, move a bit here we need to zoom in order to make our measurements as precise as possible okay <laughs> ok 
Okay, so we are almost there. We will zoom in again. And I think we are doing it. So I would like to share now the calculation. And the calculation that we have is 77,472.93 kilometers. Can you please say that again? Yes, of course. Yeah. It is 7,472.93 kilometers. So, all right. So I think it will be accurate if we work with the with the the integers with the whole numbers. Yes, um, I, I because, would agree with that. Yes. Okay. Manthos, Ioannis, Socrates, uh, and our, uh, your classmates, uh, do you have any observations to make here? Do you think we are okay? I'm calculating the circumference right now, so I don't have any particular question. Excuse me? I, I said I'm counting the circumference of the Earth now, right now, so I, I personally do not have any questions. Oh. Okay. Yes, yes, me too. Yes, we're going to use uh, this uh, distance to uh, make our uh, measurements. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So, we say that the distance that we calculated is 7,470 kilometers. Is that correct, Mariette? Yes, that's right. 7,472 kilometers. No. Okay. Oh well, it can be it can be seventy kilometers as well because the point on Bloemfontein is yes. just uh, it's uh, yeah it's just in, in the city of Bloemfontein, not specific to our specific location. I I would agree with that. Yes. Very well. So, I think that now we have all the data we need in order to proceed to the calculation, right? Yes, so the only unknown value is Earth's circumference. Exactly, so we will need to proceed to do that. And this is actually the key to this activity, right? Okay. So, in order to calculate the Earth's circumference, we will need to remember, or actually, would you like to, to, to say it, Mariette? Uh, no, you you can go ahead. You said something about slides. Yes, yes, yes. Give give, yes, give me yes. one. Give me one moment, please. All right. No, it's good. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. So I will be sharing my screen from up here. Okay, you must you must be seeing my screen. fantastic. Yes, we can see everything. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. So uh, what we have now is that we have calculated the angle theta here. We have said that it is thirty-eight point fourteen degrees correct correct okay could you share your value once again to give us to give us five uh, our value um here for the blue fountain students we we denoted that as theta so it's just the other way around doesn't matter our value is 29,86 degrees okay so we will need to do here Okay. Yes. Are you doing that? So again, sorry. Okay, so, so now we are going to proceed to... Manoli, please speak louder. We cannot hear you. 
Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so right now to, to, to add the two angles that we have uh, calculated. Okay, so give me one moment. I will. Okay, so we have 38.14, but we measured. And your value is? Uh, 29,86. So, oh, this is 68 degrees. Okay, so our angular separation is 68 degrees. Theta plus phi is 68 degrees. Now, That's how we have it also, yes. Great. So now this corresponds to a distance here. The arc length here is equal to 7,470 kilometers, right? That's right, yes. Very well. So, if everyone agrees with that, then the next step that we have to do is that we need to do uh, the calculation which goes as follows. We take 360 degrees, okay, and we divide it with 68. So let's see. That, that is our big moment now. 360 degrees, one moment, over 68 equals this one, 5.29. And this we multiply. Could you give me the number again? Uh, this we multiply with uh, 7,470. Very well. So, big moment. We are ready. We are 39.547 kilometers. Okay. All right. And that is important to note that we are calculating um the circumference of the earth over the poles over the north and the south pole well so our uh, our measurement here uh, is a bit underestimated okay uh, it is uh, about uh, 500 kilometers or so off and this means that uh, we will have to estimate our error in our calculation again Okay, so now we pass the button to our students who are doing the measurement themselves, okay? And we will redo the calculations. It is, our measurement is 1.25% uh, of the uh, actual value. So this is quite good, I would say, if we take into account the weather conditions and so on. Right. I just want to mention clearly uh, to the students also here in Bluefontaine that the the, uh, the circumference of the Earth as we know it is 40,075 kilometers. That's the real circumference. We calculated it to 39,547. Right. So can you can you quickly work out what is the error? What in in what, what percentage? Uh, they, 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 they just also just mentioned it, but can you calculate it for me as well? Yeah. You're talking to me? Uh, no, I'm talking to the students here. Okay. Uh, you, you also said the error is in in um, is within how how many percent? Within one point twenty five percent. Oh. Yes, I also get the same. Our error is um is about one point three percent out. So we are within one and a half percent of the of the right uh, the right measurement for the circumference. Okay. A 
excuse me, was there a question? Uh, just <laughs> just one moment, Profofan, quickly want to say something? Uh, no, I just wanted to give them a feeling for uh, uh, the 1.3 percent. Uh, when you uh, say the error is around 500 kilometers, that sounds a lot, but it's only 1.3 percent because the Earth's circumference is so big, and five uh, and that 500 kilometers corresponds more or less to the distance from Bluefontein to the biggest city in South Africa to the north, uh, which is Johannesburg, or Joburg, as we call it. Uh, so if we walked a very long time, uh, slept over a few nights and got there, we have covered only 1.3% of the Earth's circumference. Okay. So the Earth is small in the universe, but very big for human experience. Okay. So, uh, I think that uh, we are uh, quite ready to proceed. Professor Hoffman? Yes. Oh. I think we will we need to, to give a few minutes for comments or questions so something until we proceed to the solar part of our activity. Yeah, okay, so I just want to make sure that you say that we can give time for questions from the from the students now. Okay, should we uh, go over to the solar part now, or do you want to give the students opportunity for questions? I, I, I'm not sure whether I heard correctly. Um, if uh, if there are questions, yes, we can uh, we can discuss because uh, then we will uh, move uh, here from our side to the observation of the of the sun, and we will transmit uh, uh, live uh, live video. So, now yeah. Okay. Um, let me just uh, look here. Uh, we are, uh, whether the learners are very shy. Any one of you would like to ask a question or make a remark? Make a remark. That's your opportunity to get a camera to zoom onto you. <laughs> no, they don't like that prospect. <laughs> uh, not at the, the age they are. They want to be a little bit low profile. Okay, uh, Manolis, I will now move to my computer. Uh, should I first start with explaining about the sun? But I think just for the very beginning, if you can just share your image that you have, your live image on your solar telescope and point out a sunspot there, and that will just give me a good starting point for the explanation that I want to give. Okay, you give us a few moments to prepare also. Okay, just want to explain to uh, st students here. Um, okay, you know, this was an observatory where they studied the stars. That big telescope, that's an exhibit outside, was here in the center of the building. We have another observatory next to Marshall Spoort, the Boyden Observatory, where we study the stars in the evening. Now it's daytime. Can we see any stars? Yes, we can. At least one, the sun. Okay. So for astronomers, it's in daytime, they use the sun as an example. And what you hear about the sun, a lot of that also applied to other stars. The only big difference is the sun is much closer. Now out there at that school, the EA school, uh, Elenu Germaniki, Agogi school. That's more or less. They pronounce it different, but that's how you spell it. Uh, they have an observatory and the solar telescope, and they're now going to share live what that telescope sees, what the sun looks like now. And then I'm going to explain a bit from the back there. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, uh, so let me share my screen. Okay, there is their observatory. Yes, okay, so let, let me first uh, show you that this is the live view of the camera of, uh, that has been adapted to our solar telescope. So let me show you a couple of things here. Okay. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if you can see me. As you will see, you will see that you will see that you can uh, just hide the light, light layer, and then you can see better on the screen in front. Can you see me? Okay. If you can see me, you see that what we have here. First of all, it is not advisable to come with your own eyes. Even though it is not advisable to look at the sun through the eyepiece of a telescope if you don't have the proper filters with which you will filter out such light. And what does that mean? There are two things that you need to take into account. The first thing is the very high intensity of light that is coming towards your eyepiece. So therefore you will need a filter with which you will have to cut down the intensity that you receive in your detector, your eye. The second thing that you need to take into account is that in order to observe particular characteristics of the sun, to be able to find, let's say, a very narrow band of wavelengths that you will observe. So this is being done by the so-called analog filter, which is here, okay? And by moving, the, changing, let's say, the distance between the two plates of the filter, we can actually select from a bar, or a very short bar, or narrow bar of wavelength. Here, we are at the beta alpha part of the spectrum, okay? And the... Uh, you might want to have a look here. I don't know if you can see properly. Okay, so uh, give me one moment, please. So you see here, this is the telescope. You see here the dome of the observatory. Okay, and up there is the sun. And uh, now, what we have done here is to set up our uh, patient in our mount and have it follow the sun, track the sun. And as it does that, our telescope is pointing at the sun all the time. So the image from the telescope, we move it, we take it with our uh, camera, and then we move it to show you the light view. Okay? So, I think that maybe we might need to go back to the live view of the telescope now. Okay. So, what you see here now, uh, I will, is our sun. Our sun right now, as Professor Hoffman will also explain, is not at uh, its peak activity. It is uh, near a minimum, which means that uh, objects uh, known as solar sunspots or other objects are not very clearly, uh, are not visible up there, very few of them. Okay, so what I would like to, to show you, and we will show it to you again in a bit with, with better resolution, is that we actually observe a sunspot here, we observe some filaments here, and if I increase my gain, you will see that we have some prominences that are not visible with the naked eye, but if you could zoom in here, you could be able to observe them. So the sun is actually not as uh, calm as you one would believe. Uh, I think that I will proceed. Uh, it's a good moment to proceed to Professor Hoffman 
and uh, then we will go come back to show you some uh, images of uh, our star that have been produced by us. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we are. Okay. Stop them with yes. Stop them. Okay. I just want to be on the phone. Okay. Okay. So now I'll cut and skip. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hello, uh, Manolis, can you hear me? Yes, of course, yes. Okay. Um, the sun is not very active at the moment, so the sunspots that uh, there are, and Manolis will show it uh, in a short while, when he show you the uh, processed images of what they have observed uh, over the weekend. And, uh, but we should keep in mind the sun is very big, just more than 100 times the diameter of the Earth. So if you have a large sunspot, like those shown on this animation, okay, this is only an animation, but you will see these things really exist on the uh, pictures that you will soon see that they obtained on the telescope there at the EA school in Athens. Uh, now, a sunspot like that, the Earth can easily fit into that region. This is, of course, the surface of the Sun. The surface of the Sun is around 5,500 uh, degrees centigrade. So if I round a bit, um, that's quite hot. Uh, anything we know on Earth will just burn up or melt at that temperature. But that's still low compared to the sun in the same, the temperature in the center of the sun, where it's around 15 million degrees centigrade, and where the energy of the sun is being produced through uh, nuclear fusion. And that's another topic for another time. So let's focus for now on what we see uh, with appropriate equipment, very special equipment. Remember, you may know, never go out and look at the sun with your eyes you can damage it uh, permanently uh, the sun is very bright and your eye slings focus it onto the retina okay you need very special equipment so just believe that it looks like this but when we look at things like that beautiful uh, pictures or animations we want to understand now why are the sunspots apparently dark they are not really that dark but they are dark compared to the surrounding areas. And that's because their temperature is cooler with around 1,000 degrees. So it's still hot there, around 4,500 degrees centigrade. Yeah, well, just think about Blue Fountain when it's 35 degrees. Now it is more than 100 times that. Okay. Uh, and those sunspots come and go. Sometimes there are many, sometimes they are small, sometimes they are large, and they often come in groups. So here we have a group of sunspots. There is one, and one that's almost merging with it, another one there, and that is linked with solar activity. Now, solar activity is driven by the heat of the sun and the magnetic fields. You can imagine that at very high temperatures, all the gases are ionized. You have learned in physical science about atoms with electrons. The electrons, many of the electrons are kicked out, so you have charged particles moving around because of the high temperature. And that causes magnetic fields. Electric currents generate magnetic fields. And those magnetic fields, you will see in this animation, um, what it looks like underneath the sun and how it affects what we see here. So let me play the animation. If it needs be, I can play it a second time. So we go under the, there you see the magnetic fields breaking through, and that's where the sun spots are formed. Due to complicated physics, the magnetic fields cools the surrounding areas. 
and the neighboring sunspots are opposing magnetic poles, north and south poles. Okay, let me go back to the replay. Remember, this is animation. No one has ever been under the surface of the sun. But they worked out with a lot of good physics and mathematics that that's what's happening there. Okay, you can see there at the end, he showed an eruption. And we can do it once again. And we focus now. Okay, it's complicated. We, we cannot see, uh, uh, are you playing the video? Okay, we're just going to restart the video so that they can comment more, sorry. I have to, fortunately, I have a technical expert here. So this is a, ah, okay. There we go again. At some stage, the magnetic fields got to get together and we call it the reconnection. Where the magnetic fields are very, very strong. Uh, uh, you, you may need to, to push play here. There you can see. Okay, we pause it there, and then we can play again. There is the magnetic reconnection, and then the magnetic field carries off plasma. And sometimes those uh, large eruptions reach the Earth and cause a lot of problems. Okay, now I can go to the next screen. Can you, uh, we cannot see the... Uh, for us, it seems like the video has lagged. It, uh, it's not uh, moving. It's... Uh... At zero. Okay, so you can't see the video at the moment. Okay, but I have played it. Uh, okay, share again. Do you see it now? Yes, if you push play. Okay, let it play a last time, and then we focus on the, what happens towards the end. We've explained that where the magnetic fields Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. There the magnetic fields breaks through the surface, cause the sunspots. And see where the magnetic files field lines are close together. Eventually they connect there and form a loop, a new loop, which carries off into space with a lot of solar material. We call that uh um, uh, let me see, um, uh, coronal mass ejection. Okay, now we go to the next screen. Okay. Uh, this is from the University of Stanford, and here we can get the newest updates on what the sun looks like uh, from space telescopes. So here's in white light. So these photos have typically been taken only about 15 minutes ago. And if you look carefully, you can see something there. Uh, Manolo has already pointed it out. He will zoom into that area on the processed images. Okay, now let's, this is in the visible light. If we go to, um, say, the SOHO telescope, that is a, an observatory in space. There you can see the latest images taken about 15 to 20 minutes ago in various wavelengths where they use uh, different filters. Manolis explained that the image they obtained on their solar telescope is obtained through, I think, a hydrogen alpha filter, but Manolis can correct me. So this is on different wavelengths. And uh, let's just look on that image, for example. There you can see some activity at the sun in that region there. 
Okay, so let's go back to um, the EA school, their observatory and their solar telescope. And Manolis can explain more about what they could actually see from the Earth with their telescope, which is an educational telescope with good equipment. But remember, these images I show you here are the most sophisticated obtained from space by uh, space observatories. Okay, Manolis. Uh, you can take over the yes, uh, yes. the central central part of the stage now. Okay, so let let me share the screen again. So once again, here we show you the live view of the telescope. Okay, we are lucky enough that we have the quite good weather here. Uh, now I would, however, we have lots of seeing. Okay, seeing means atmospheric turbulence here. Okay, so I would like to move back to some uh, live videos and some images that we took uh, past week where the scene was even better. Okay, and uh, maybe we will be able to, to observe and, uh, and see and appreciate the, the whole image better. So the, this image that you see here, you can see my screen, right? You can see my screen? You can. Yes, we can. Okay, so what you see here, this is from Thursday, and you are able to see the two sunspots that we observed. You see that uh, compared to today, they have moved. Okay, compared to then, actually, today, it's a bit different. And uh, this can, uh, this is a very nice lesson, let's say, uh, because it indicates uh, solar rotation, the rotation of our sun. This is actually what Galileo did. Um, almost uh, 400 uh, years uh, ago, uh, when uh, by observing the sunspots, uh, he was able to find, uh, to estimate the, the period of uh, the solar rotation. Let me give you an image here of uh, the, other, the other side, let's say, okay? And you can see here the filament, and this is the point here, is that uh, this, this is live, live view. You may be able to see here a foggy, let's say, uh, layer, uh, which is actually the chromosphere, okay? And uh, what we did, uh, and, okay, what we did here in order to be able to uh, take a better look at our host star, uh, we actually took these uh, videos and we did some lucky imaging. The process with which we increase, let's say, our signal to noise in order to be able to find our, uh, to do some better image processing. So let me show you some images from here. So this is a quite recent one. Okay, you can see here, if you zoom in, okay, you can see the prominence here, and you can also see the filaments that we were discussing about. Okay, and if I go back up here, you will not be able to see much, but here you are able to observe the sunspot with much, much better detail. Okay, uh, so I think uh, that this is a good moment to, to come back to our, to our live view. And maybe start uh, our final discussions and uh, lead to, to the conclusion. Okay, Manolis, can you hear me on that side? Yes, yes. Um, okay, so uh, this event has been live streamed on that YouTube um, link that you sent us. We will make sure, okay, it will be the available there, a recorded version uh, after, after the time, if the learners want to go and look at that. Is that correct? Are you still there? Yes. Yes, yes, we are here. 
Okay, okay. So we are going to share that uh, YouTube link uh, with the learners. So uh, uh, from when will there be a, the, the event be available in a recorded version on that link? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so will it uh, be uh, available immediately after this event already? The recorded Great. version. Okay, so from uh, from our part, we would like to to say that uh, this was a, a most uh, a important activity, and we would like to thank everyone, uh, all the, the fantastic team from uh, the University of the Free State uh, who was with us, all the fantastic students from both sides, and uh, we hope that. Uh, Throughout this, uh, you know, sort of activity, you, we help somehow uh, convey the true genius of Eratosthenes and the, the way he understood uh, our planet. So, from my part, I would like to thank you all. Thank you so much. Okay, um, for this Manolis, can you just give, can you just give us sound from this side, just for a moment? Can you yes. hear me? Okay. If, let's give them a, a loud hand tap for their great event. Okay, that was just to say thank you for all your arrangements. It was hard work and we enjoyed it. And we can go and look at the video. Uh, before uh, you disappear, let's just make sure you write it down. And you can go and look on YouTube and show your parents if you uh think you didn't do something funny <laughs> you can go and share it so just give me a moment to look that up uh, okay manolis from our side uh, we then say goodbye and thank you to our technical team they did a great work we would not have survived without them thank bye -bye. you very much. stay safe bye bye, bye.